Come here, my bitch. No. I'm not going to block it. You're good. Because CBG, I be blocking the shit out of the camera. No, that's why we put it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. The Skills Factory out of Atlanta, Georgia taking on Highland School out of Warrington, Virginia. And Skills Factory will take the tip off. And here running the point guard position, Corey T, no good, Josh Hamilton with the rebound and ignites the push. Here is, oh, the missed layup by Jeremiah Gorman. And now the Skills Factory into the lane, off balance, rebound, comes down to Chance Perkins. Perkins, who can be a microwave? Oh, and a big time block right there. That block by number five, Casey Williams, who big time athlete. Williams off the lane, yes sir, Williams, okay. Flex the shoulders then, young fella. A slight flex there. Yes sir, yes sir. And we had a, I had a great time watching him as he faced off against Combine at the CBG Juco Prep Showcase. And here is the, in my opinion, the X Factor for Highland. Josh Hamilton, the six foot eight native of Ontario. Ontario, Canada. A From the six. Absolutely. Good to see him healthy. Yeah, battled a lot of injuries over the summer. Definitely, definitely. His stock will a, rise. Yeah, he's had EPL. a great preseason. I think he's just going to get, he's going to find a lot of looks, and you're going to call Nate Mint for a travel and there. he calls Nate Mint for the travel. And, um... Oh, and Gorman with the steal. And a tough finish. Gorman finished with double digit scoring against Utah Prep in Highlands matchup. And their game against AJ DeBasta the other night. And, and this is Tristan McDowell with it, the sophomore. And he is one to watch over the oh. over this year. And that one was most likely travel. Looked like he shuffled his feet before little, the step through. A little hopscotch. Right there. Quick subs early on for the skills factory. And a little action. Nada met in the corner, no good. No good. Battle for the rebound. And Nada met consensus top five player in the country. ESPN 24-7, all of the above. And good contest there, he's gonna push in transition. That's Inside I think. Pass. Oh, what a nice block right there by the big fella. Coming off the bench, Rim Uma Berry. Uma Berry. Three seconds. Three second call is going to be called on Berry. And it looks like both teams need to kind of settle down just a little bit. And Highland will go with a little bit of a small ball here and move Nader Mint to the five spot. And they will bring in the dynamic sophomore, Jamal Smith. Jamal Smith, who started with New World on the Adidas circuit last year. 
And the kick ball is going to be called. Quick huddle by Mint Perkins and Rivera. And it'll be a 30 second timeout right now with 1631. As we go into the timeout here at Mount Zion Prep, little Tevin Campbell, take you back, 1994. You know, it's it's a little weird. The DJ's vibes got a little weird before the biggest <laughs> game of the day. He's playing a ton of Mariah Carey. <laughs> Luther Vandross. Uh, yeah, a little Luther. Now we're going to Tevin Campbell here. I mean. Only on the CBG Live. <laughs> I'm just wondering, does he have, play, like, is he getting a playlist ready for tonight? I, th I don't know. What, I, I thought what it was maybe an after party. Yeah, you know, that's what, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe he got his playlist mixed up. <laughs> Before it was like Big X the plug, and now it's, yeah. it's Tevin Campbell here. Yeah, I hope his hard drive didn't crash, you know <laughs> what I mean? And now Highland comes back out of the timeout. Smith swings it over to Rivera, gets it over to Amit with five seconds on the shot clock. Low rip through. Bang. And there he goes. That's Bang. what we talk about. <laughs> 6'10", low rip through. He goes from 6'10 to 5'10 on that rip through and then just takes the bump contact and elevates and shoots over the top. And now good action though, but great, even better pressure from Highland. Good throwback pass. Here's the dynamic sophomore. He's off the mark. Ament comes down with the rebound. Throws it ahead to Smith. Gorman back to Ament. Looking to attack. The handle takes the bump. Two foot jump stop. Here's Gorman for three. And Jeremiah Gorman. And if you're going to talk about somebody who's made the leap in the last two years at Highland. Oh, yeah. He's named number one. I mean, he had a great summer with Global Squad on the HGSL circuit. Yes. Kind of showing, you know, yeah, I might, I might have to play a role at Highland, but I could score the ball as yeah, well as anybody. Most definitely. And I would say him turning the corner uh, and, uh, and basically having it so that he and Rivera can be two point guards on the floor together as an outstanding get back block. Here's Smith off the mark. But Gorman and Rivera with that dual point guard look for Highland. Limits their turnovers, makes them more efficient on the defensive end, guarding the basketball. Well, you know, a lot of people are going to kind of look at the four guard lineup of Highland and point out, you know, what could be some flaws. I think one thing people don't talk enough about is that they're able to put on put so much defensive pressure. Oh man, on on ball handlers uh, and switch everything. You know, we're already at a disadvantage size wise. Why don't we just jump everything and switch everything? Yeah, most definitely. And make these 6'4", six, 6'5", six, guys uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I would agree and take it one step further. You may not see a more connected perimeter defensive team oh, yeah. than Highland. Coach Logan really hangs his hat on that. But the skills factory, you may not see a team that plays harder than them. Yeah. It's Carter McDoyle. In the corner, gets it off. Oh, great shot fake. Like the mid-range pull up, no good. Here they McDoyle. go. Doyle Playing hard. Wow, and go. what a finish. I'm telling you, the skills factory, they don't back down from anybody. Gorham. Mm. <laughs> Jeremiah Gorham with another three ball. And we just talked about how much he's come on and coming to his own. And, oh. Looked like it was tipped. Looked like it was tipped, but it'll stay with the skills factory. But love how even right after giving up the three ball, skills factory, boom, takes it out. One, two dribbles, they're right back at you on this end of the court. And And Tristan McDonald's gonna check back in. Just 
Swings it over into the lane, no good. Good box out by Rivera. Here's he meant. Oh, they're gonna let him play a little bit. Time out here, 13:25 remaining. We'll be right back on the CBG Live Network. Throw it into a mint. <clears throat> he turns the corner. Driving. He's guarded really good. Has to get off of it. Oh, you don't want to leave this guy open. Right Shivas. away. The young fella, Shivas, with another three. As soon as he checks in, he doesn't need a shot to warm up. As soon as he touches his hand, he's already warmed up. Here's McDonald. Oh, oh. right back at you. And we were just talking about maybe the trip had him, you know, unsettled a little bit, but he comes right out of the timeout and settles that real quick. Here's Rivera off the three ball. Yes, sir, off the pass from Ament. So Nate Ament with two driving kick three balls. And that's going to be something that he's going to have to, I mean, he's going to have to trust his teammates. They're going to have to make shots throughout this year because everybody is going to be keyed in on stopping him. Yeah. Yeah, and I think he does a great job of making sure that his teammates know just because he takes a shot, it's not taking anything away from them. So they're always ready when he puts pressure on the defense and gets into the paint. And Gorham, oh, and a steal right there. And a big time flush by Finley Keith. Finley Keith, who's actually done an outstanding job on the mint so far. Keith in that 6'6, six, 6'7 six, six, range. Gorham, oh, that's his shot. The floater off the left foot with the right hand, off the side pick and roll. I don't know if I've ever seen him miss it. Right back at you, step up ball screen. Another ball screen. Another ball screen, and here he goes. He is awake now, ladies and gentlemen. Just a sophomore. McDonald. Rivera to Smith. Smith. What a sophomore matchup that is. Shivas showing, going. A mint. Off the bounce, That's into just, the lane, oh, gets his own rebound. Great hustle, Swings kick out, over. count that. Oh no, a little oh. bit long on that one. And look at the big fella, Uma Berry. He, I mean, he is in tip top shape, that's for sure. He definitely looks the part. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, he just, two possessions ago, he set five ball screens in the same possession. <laughs> I said, man. <laughs> Shout out to Bobby Montgomery, the UTEP commit from Mount Zion Prep. <laughs> One of the better personalities. Oh, yeah. In the EPL. We need to have sure. a camera just follow Bobby around. No, nah, seriously. The Bobby cam. Here we are. Flat pick and roll. 
Corum. Oh, man, got pushed in the air, no call. But now here comes the skills factory. McDowell. McDowell, the lefty, off the mark. Perkins now pushing it. Perkins, nice change of pace. Wild three is no good off the dribble. Here's McDowell pushing it, probing. Gets the reversal. Oh, and they call it travel. Maybe, maybe a travel, but or maybe so fast the ref couldn't see what was going on. But nevertheless, it'll be Highland basketball. And 20, they'll hang on to a nine point lead with just over 10 minutes left to play. And they go to Amit, he slips, and the floor is dangerously slippery whenever bodies hit the floor. Oh, and then Boom. off the turnover, a big time three ball. Cam Jones, who was also a standout at the CBG Juco prep. Bingo! Bingo! And give the assist to Manoa Billerwell. Here's a mint with the shot fake. Stolen away. And a little bit of contact, no good. Hamilton. And McDoyle is called for a travel. Has done an outstanding job of protecting the rim. Here comes Perkins. Here comes Amit. Gets it over. And a block from behind. Here's the skills factory. They'll break it down with a little set. Yeah, that, they missed the travel on that one for sure. Screen to screener action, and it's a knockdown off the bench for Dev Jones. And I'll tell you what about the skills factory. He's coaches, Coach Rob Johnson has played 11 guys here in the first half. And they bring, and they say a tip. They'll say a tip. And they've, you know, Skills Factor has woken up here. Yeah. Um, you know, that timeout. Turning and showing, you know, the ability to turn their defense into offense. And that's going to be something that Highland's going to have to adjust. We talked earlier in the last game about, you know, post-grad basketball, how physical and how fast it is. Yeah. And, you know, I think that it's affecting one team a little bit more here as, as we get into that. Second half, you know, under 10 minutes in the first half. Right. You know, they would have already played a quarter and a half at this point. Yeah. With multiple probably times to sit down and um, a slower pace, more fouls are going to be called. Yeah. Uh, since they're used to playing in a high school setting versus this. So it's something they'll have to adjust to moving forward. But. No, most definitely. Great point. Great point. Because um, we talk about the adjustment going from levels, different levels when it comes to the game of basketball. And this is going to prepare Highland, I think, to, you know, their guys, especially their seniors, as well as their juniors and sophomores as well, though. This is going to prepare them for the next level more than any other high school situation. Oh, yeah, opinion. 100%. I mean, we've talked about, you know, what it is like the post-grad, why college coaches recruit post-grads so much. Not only are the kids, you know, usually – well, back in the day, they'd be a year older. They're yeah. usually the same age as most kids that reclassify yep. uh, in middle school or high school now. But it's the style of play. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being used to playing by college rules, um, you know, running mostly a little bit more advanced sets, playing more physical, being able to play through, through more things, shooting at a three-point line. It's all a much easier transition yeah. when you play in this style versus – you know, playing regular high school basketball. Yep. Um, and going to college, it's a it's a whole whole new thing when you get it, to that. It's almost a different sport. Yeah. 
And talking to Coach Johnson earlier, Man, before that. the game, right before the game, after they arrived, he just talked about he really wanted his guys to embrace the journey of trying to become great at the small things. Yep. And he was talking about, you know, the defensive pressure, the ball pressure, what you talked about, alluded to a few moments ago that has stepped up drastically since we've gotten over this 10-minute mark, as well as the rebounding, the cutting, the screening, just being great at all the little things. And that has definitely, and look at Hamilton. Sky in for the rebound. Perkins swings it over to a mint. There's oh. a jab, and wow. Oh. My goodness. It doesn't take long. Effortless range. Yep. You know, watching him in that matchup with A.J. Dybansta, it was the, the quality of buckets that he's able to get. Yeah. Being his size. So we've watched him grow up right in front of our eyes, right? We've been watching Nate Ament for four years. Yep. And... You know, the the intrigue to the polish, you know, how polished he is at this point. Yep. He has gotten so much better at making shots from everywhere. Yeah, he really has. Shout out to his trainer. I gotta brag a, I gotta brag a little bit. One of my former players, Chauncey Beckett, with MVM training. Does an outstanding job with Nate. Oh, a great oh, hustle by Nate Amen. Outstanding hustle. He ran it down from the other side of the top of the key. And just knowing the whole time, I'm going to get to it and what I'm going to do. Heads up play to throw it off the leg, and now they get another possession out of it. Yep, even through the contact. Yep. Here's Gorm, he's back into the game. He will not sit on the bench for long at all. I'll pay for tape. We don't have any. Can they take it? Ankle tape. And Hamilton with another rebound. Here's it meant. Low rip through counter. That one is off the mark. And now getting back. And the floater is up. No good. Amit comes down with the rebound. He throws the long outlet pass to Gorham. Swings it over to Rivera. Oh, outstanding vision to the sophomore, Jamal Smith. And a great decision there, I think, by Gorham as well. Yeah. Catching that long, a lot of people would try to force that downhill. He saw Rivera trailing, knew they had numbers, brings it out, and then they get an uncontested layup out of it. Yeah, definitely, because I saw big Uma Berry running the floor like oh, a yeah. gazelle, and he was getting ready to go try to punch that thing through the backboard. Smith. Oh, oh. And they call the contact, but they're – Speaking of Barry, I mean, he, he may be 6'8"-ish, <laughs> you know, but he plays a lot bigger, that's for sure. I mean, just the, the – connect. we were talking about the connectivity of this group and watching them in transition, you can see it. I mean, the yeah. long outlet to the, to the touch pass back. Like, you know, it's not one person dribbling the whole way there, willing to give it up early – Make, make the defense shift and make the right reads. That way everybody gets it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And it's, and it's a big thing uh, when we talk about any sport, how much chemistry matters more than talent sometimes. It's all about how well your talent works together, no matter what the level of it is. And in and out. So 26 17, 545 remaining here in the first half. 6 0 run for Highland after TSF battled back to bring it within three, and that's another turnover. Mm. Little miscommunication right there. Oh, you can't let him have this wide open. Oh, and he shoots it long again. And hustling back, contesting. Ability to go straight up and go vertical for that. But the skills factory fighting, I'm telling you. Yep. They play as hard as anybody in the country. Yeah, but Carter McDoyle ends up with a nice little, little jump hook there. Yeah, and when we saw them at this CBG Juco Prep Fall Showcase, 
they didn't have all of their pieces due to injuries. And so being able to see Casey Williams play on the perimeter full time, you know, that, that's a big time treat. Oh, and he was getting ready to go ahead and try to punch that thing home. And it'll be a timeout for Highland as they cling to a seven-point lead with four and a half left to play here in Atlanta, Maryland at the inaugural, no, I'm sorry, not the inaugural, but the 2024 edition. The 2024 edition of the Myrtle Chaffin Classic here in PG County, Maryland. As the DJ has said, it's the nightcap. We're going to take you guys back in time. And now, it'll be Gorham coming off the screen from a mint. And they'll throw him the lob, and he'll grab and catch it in a great and dynamic backdoor lob play out of Highland, out of the timeout. By the good brother Darius. And they're going to call a travel. On the ones and twos on the whiteboard right there. And now, trying to extend this lead. And they'll go, oh, and Hamilton though, fumbled the catch, gets it back, spinning, keeps his pivot, oh. And hey, I told y'all leave my man's alone, man. Oh, and a great back tap right there by in the finger roll by Jeremiah Gorham. And Gorham running no no risk there. Finishes right over with the finger roll. The official looked like he was trying to say you can move on the screen. I don't know what he's talking, what sport that is, but. Um, here we go. Only two fouls called in the game so far, so they're letting them play for sure. A little bit of a ball screen motion from Highland. Corner three, and there he is again, Shivas. Travel call on the skills factor. Hey, 
And here comes the Highland School up 14. And Hamilton trying to show the range. No good. And, oh, almost a near steal on the rebound by Rivera, Julian Rivera. And we've got a quick substitution. And now for the skills factory. Oh, great hesitation. Over to the lefty for the three ball, no good. And they fight for it. Smith brings it across. Smith now on the left side. Looks like it was tipped out. So, after a discussion, <laughs> it's going to be TSF basketball under, uh, out of bounds. So, they go to McDoyle at the high post. Keeps his pivot. Tough oh, shot. and he knocks it down. Tough and they shot. needed that one. They caught a break right there on that last no call. Oh, and they catch another one as Shiva steps out of bounds. But they, that stops the bleeding as Highland was on uh, about an 8-0 run right there after that last time out. Let's see if the skills factory can create. Oh, nifty behind the back dribble. Oh, and they call the block. That's, I think, another rule that they'll have to make adjustments for in EPL games. We play with an arc. You got to get your feet completely outside of the arc. Yep. Before the player lifts. And I don't mind the new clarity for that rule. Because, I mean, we've seen so many games be decided yeah. On a block charge call from the NCAA tournament to the NBA finals, all of the above. Skills factory looking to execute. Down 12. Doesn't feel like 12, but they are down 12. Mid-range jumper. Oh, we might have gotten fouled right there. Yeah. But the big time follow. Cam Jones going right, pulling right. And now Gorham it and goes to the is, ball screen. Oh, great extra pass. Oh, they're waiting for Perkins. They're waiting for Perkins to get going. And we're seeing the versatility, though, seriously, of, of Carter McDoyle. Number zero for the skills factor. He's guarded all five guys at some point for Highland. And that's back to back to back turnovers for Highland. Almost disaster Whoa. there. And Corey T in the lane, same hand, wow. same foot finish. And he is crafty, ladies and gentlemen. He has come in and he's run the show from start to finish. Helped settle down the skills factory. And Nate a meant to beat the oh. buzzer. And a quiet last four minutes for a minute. No good, but at the half, Highland in the lead in their first EPL game ever. 33-25 over TSF. 
So don't go anywhere. Stay with us, folks, here on the CBG Live Network.
And we're back now with the action for the second half. And Hamilton hustles, but even more so. And it'll be a turnover right back. Casey Williams with diving on the floor after Hamilton. And then Gorham comes up with it, but the travel gives it back to the skills factory. And they'll use the step up screen, short roll, great pass to the dynamic sophomore and he is blocked at the rim by Hamilton. And now here comes the skills factory. Back up top. And it'll be a shot clock violation. Looked like he might have gotten hit on the arm right there. And now here comes Rivera. What a matchup this has been. Here's Gorham. Great Hezzy off the ball screen. Wait one more, Perkins for three, and it's good. And I'll tell you what, Jeremiah Gorham has been absolutely outstanding in just making the right play at the right time. Seems like every time he touches it, just one of those guys who just helps you win. For you coaches out there that are watching, He's one of those guys that will help you win games at the next level. And you've got to start, you've got to appreciate everything else besides freak athleticism to appreciate him. Perkins to Gorham. 
three ball. There he goes again. And I'm telling you, folks, the unsung hero of this mob. And now the turnover. And it'll be a 39-25, 14-point lead with 18 minutes left after a turnover by the Skills Factory. And here comes Highland now. Rivera gets it over to Perkins. Perkins back to Rivera. Rejects the ball screen into the lane. Big time shot block. And this front line of the Skills Factory, though, is super impressive between Barry and, and um, McDoyle as well as Keith. Here's a mint. Low rip, spinning, probing, and it's going to be blocked. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, we have Golden State Prep. Oh, an outstanding. Outstanding baseline out of bounds execution. And it'll be a timeout for the Skills Factory. 41 to 25. As Highland has come out and thrown the blows to start off this second half. But just like in the first half, Highland came, came out and swung first. And I expect Coach Rob Johnson to have the skills factory back clicking on all cylinders after this time, this quick timeout. I don't know. <laughs> DJ taking us back to 2006. I'm all for it. No, 2005, excuse me. I'm all for it. But, man, is he missing someone right now? I don't know, man. <laughs> if he plays Maxwell, I'm out of here. <laughs> if, he, if he plays Tyrese, I'm gone. <laughs> oh, man. Immaculate vibes here for this first EPL Elite Prep League. The most prestigious, the best league for prep basketball in America. And the miss free throw, and here comes the skills factory. They cut the lead down to 14. Perkins dribbling, probing, trying to figure out where he's going to go with it. Gorham comes off the ball screen from Emmett. Gorham, oh, great action. Oh, beautiful hesitation by Gorham. I am so impressed with him in the last six months, man. Every time I see him, he shows me something even more dynamic. And here's Barry off balance. And it looks like Here comes the skills factory. Three ball, no good. Amit comes down with the rebound. Ahead to Gorham. Gorham in the lane. Oh, another block right there by the skills factory. Give that one to Barry. Oh, man. They're going to call it every time. If you don't rip low, the refs are going to call it travel. And now, flare pass, Rivera hit on the arm and still knocks it down. And Highland making a big statement to begin the second half here. 
And it seems like every time the skills factory has gone on a run, Highland has responded amazingly. And come out on a big run to start the second half. I believe it was, what, 35? Was it 35, 27 and a half? 33, 25? 33, 25, I believe. Yeah, so that's a 13-2 run to, to open the second half. Yep. Tell you what, whatever Coach Logan Miller said in the locker room seems to be working. And the free throw is good for the skills factory. Here is Rivera. Over to Perkins. Back up top to Rivera. Plays through the physical contact. And they call the travel. I think that's a good call. He got to the hop step and then took one more. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. It looked like he got pushed in the back. But, you know, asking the officials to see two things in one play is... They might say they don't get paid enough or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, great step up side screen. Oh, great feed. Oh, he was there. Oh, he was definitely there. Now, in the post-grad world, is it the same as the NBA in college where if you fall in the restricted area? I believe so. Okay, okay. Meanwhile, the missed free throw, missed opportunity for the skills factory. They've got to convert on these free throws. Gorham. And on a the mint. mark and Nate a man. Oh, and he gets the and one. Count it. And the foul, folks. And a mint who hit some jumpers early. Caught the back door, double back screen lob. But the skills factory have been throwing. They've thrown four different defenders at him. Oh, yeah. Already, which is one of the reasons why Coach Logan wanted Highland School to play in the EPL to get a step up as far as a notch in competition. Ah, and that's on the point guard right there. That's on the point guard right there. You got to be patient. One thing I'll tell you I'm amazed at, Jack, is and even this past summer, spring and summer, I told my guys, you know, hey, we're not trying to start a fight, but if a guy screens you like a girl, run through it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that that's something that's got to be put a little bit under control on the boys' side. Shivas. Oh, my goodness. And Gorham did a it's, great job. The, the, the read was there to a meant. He was a little bit late seeing it. Yeah. But, but reading the rotation, seeing the crashing defender, throws the skip to Shivas. Who I would have loved to see shoot the three. Yeah. But still gets to the spot and knocks down the pull up. Yeah. I would I would mean, are we seeing the evolution of uh, Shivas turning into a three-level scorer? Uh, possibly. <laughs> possibly. He might we, start dunking on kids here. Sir. Hey, we. I saw him dunk one at the Juco Prep Show. There it is. Oh, my so. goodness. And Gorham wasn't late on that read that time. Wow. But just a little off the mark. For a man on the finish. Mm, and a big time three ball. Needed and they needed that. that. Oh, they better get back. And, and they give one up easy. I'm, I don't know what it is, man. Shivas is just, he's just in the right place at the right time. He ain't going. They both are. All, it just seems like 90% of the time. Whoa, what a pass. What a pass. Oh. And look at him fight for it. And he's been quiet all half. The super sophomore for the skills factory. Oh, and a big time three. That might is that his first shot for Corey Corey T? Is, am I pronouncing that right? 
I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. We, we'll learn more about that. Yeah, yeah, we'll get the that. Season. We're still, this is our first game. This is our tune-up, too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right about that part. We this is our, our first game of the fall, huh? Yeah, well, we had our tune-up game at uh, at Hargrave and Oak Hill. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, mm, oh, I thought he should have counted that one. So 19-point game here, 13-26 remaining. And if you're new to the post-grad basketball scene, uh, I will tell you that this is not uh, a game that's out of reach at this point. No, not um, at all. Post-grad basketball is a marathon. It is long. Things can happen. So don't get discouraged with us just yet. Corey. Gets rid of it. They got 10 on the shot clock. Corey at the top. He's going to ask for the ball screen. They blitz it. He's got two on the shot clock. He's got to shoot it. He gets it off. Doesn't get it to go. Mm, wow. Big time stop right there. Jamal Smith over to Shivas. Oh, my goodness. Shivas. Come on now. Taylor. He gets the least amount of attention, the least amount of praise. I mean, he's got to have 12 at yeah. this point, 13. Yeah, you, you talk about a guy who just comes in and does his job. And McDonald down the lane doesn't mm. get the call. Shivas is just, I mean, you talk about for – Parents, coaches, players. Watch this young man just star in his role. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we watched him where he used to come in for two-minute stretches. Yep. To now, you know. You got to leave him out there. Yeah, he and Smith come in with that second unit. Oh, and Hamilton moving a little too fast. Keith with it. Oh. Job, and oh. a foul is going to be called. So now with 12-16 remaining. Baseline out of bounds. And while it's not over, me and you like to use the term uh, danger territory. Yeah. You know, you got to start looking at 10. You know, as yep. let's string together some buckets and some stops before we start to get into, to you know, that 10-minute range, which is, is getting lukewarm into dangerous territory. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think that also sometimes these games go so up and down and strenuous that every 10 minutes can be officiated even differently. Yes. I mean, we saw Connect Academy, Connect Prep, <laughs> go, go on a 17 to nothing, 17 to two run in the last two minutes against Mount Zion. Yeah, they were just, uh, you know. <laughs> After being almost down 30. <laughs> too deep a hole. And the step through there by oh, McDoyle. Oh, wow. That's one, of, that's one call that I just, it doesn't matter if he's swatched down. Did he hit him or not? Yeah. Is it a foul or is it not? But nevertheless, the skills factory getting a much needed break. They've got to string together some buckets. And McDoyle, their energy guy, might be one of the guys to do it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. Even though they haven't necessarily scored and been able to get into it, I thought we would see a little bit more token pressure with the depth and the, that uh, Coach Johnson has on the squality, I mean on the skills factory sideline. He'll take a quick timeout. 12.03 left to play. DJ, what you got? What you got for us? <laughs> okay. Little Rihanna. But you are here in Atlanta, Maryland, PG County, Maryland, one of the basketball capitals. 
of the world. Here for Highland School, the Skills Factory. Second half action, 12.03 left to play. The Myrtle Chaffin Classic. And out of the timeout, here comes Jeremiah Gorham. Swings it over to Rivera. Back to Gorham. Oh, way to manipulate that ball screen. Hits Rivera. Spinning. Shivas. And five on the shot clock. Gorham. Oh. It ends up in the hands no of Rivera. Way. Oh, man, I was about to say, you just got to be lucky sometimes. Keep oh. picking it up. Nowhere to go. And it's out to McDonald. Tristan McDonald down the lane. Mm. He's going to be bumped. He's got to do this. This is what he's got to do. He's got to get to the line so he can get himself in the rhythm. And continue to, that's the way he's going to be able to continue to make things happen right here. But nevertheless, a much-needed stop for the skills factory here in the second half with 11.22 left to play. And McDonald knocks down the first. You're going to see this a lot with the with the Highland team, right? It's obviously, Native men can't play 40 minutes. Like, you're going to have to give them rest. And these teams that are playing them are going to have to take advantage, especially, like you said, on the defensive end. You know, not, not, and no disrespect to this is a really well-rounded team with great chemistry and other guys that can score it, but there's only one native man. Right, and that's the truth. So, and he's going to be, you know, he creates shots for himself and others in a way that not many can. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So being able to string together stops while he's not in the game is going to be very important. And now... Here we go. Wet spot on the floor. Looked a little intentional, but we'll play on and they'll say it's on the floor. And now they say he wasn't going for the shot. That's that's crazy. They definitely look in the act of shooting the basketball. And now the back door. Take it, execute, next play. And we want to make sure that no matter what. And see, that right there could have, you can make the argument that that should have been an and one. Yeah. On a goaltend because it looked like someone in it unintentionally, but their hand got caught in the net. Yeah. With the ball on the rim. And already... A tale of two halves from the standpoint of the foul call. Like we said, in the first 10 minutes of the first half, there was only two fouls called. Yep. And now we've got we've, 10. We've got 10, 17 fouls on Highland. But once again, Skills Factory cannot convert on missed free throws opportunities. Perkins. To Hamilton, and he finishes up top. Just being in the right place at the right time. Good body control by Perkins. And then the uh, foul on Smith. And that'll be one and one. And here comes the giraffe. Nate Ament. It's my nickname for him. What'd you say? The giraffe. <laughs> Everybody wants to be a unicorn, you know? <laughs> Unicorns don't exist. Nate Ament exists. <laughs> He's the giraffe. 
funny fact is the unicorns that they actually were talking about. Don't tell me you think unicorns are real. They were talking about rhinos. <laughs> that was the name. Rhinoceros was not a name until like the 1800s. I had to look that up because you know my daughters <laughs> love unicorns. Amen. Stutter step. And a foul is going to be called. Yeah. But the chemistry uh, and the well, I mean, this Highland team is just well coached. And they're together. They battle through adversity. But a lot of time left to play. And as well, as this, the skill factory will, when we see them a month from now, though, they'll be completely different as well as they continue to try to still get used to each other as well and get the chemistry going. And that foul will be on a mint as McDoyle will go back to the line. The six, 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 seven ish lefty. And once again, the skills fact they may have they may have left about 11, 10 or eleven points on the free throw line. And that second one is good. 22 point ball game here as we approach 10 minutes to play. And now, a little Spain pick and roll and they go for the trap. Oh, what a catch by Hamilton. And heads up and McDonald out in transition. And just a great read right there on the defensive end by the skills factory. Perkins over to admit. Back over to Perkins. They get it to Rivera. They swing it to Ament. And this is where Ament is really good, playing off the catch first before he puts it on the deck. And back into the game is Jeremiah Gorin. Oh, great pick and pop and an extra pass off the ghost screen. Un unable to commit, I mean to convert. Here is Shivas Taylor with the, oh, and he misses the layup. And Coach Logan looking for a goaltending. And there's McDonald. So McDonald's three ball cuts it to 17. 17. With just under nine to play. I mean, if they get this thing to 10 with about five and five, four and a half minutes to play, completely different game. Again, prep basketball, long game, lots of changes, lots of factors. We'll be right back after this short timeout. From the CBG Live Network. Back here, second half action, just under nine minutes left to play. Highland School up 17-62 to 45 on the Skills Factory. But nevertheless, despite the score, this has been a super competitive game. And he calls the travel 
Ornament. And McDonald with it, guarded by Rivera. Oh, Jesus. Yep, and they're going to call an offensive foul there on McDonald. Both teams getting really handsy. Couple elbows. Oh, great jump trap. I like that action. On the defensive side of the ball from the skills factory. Now, if you're Highland, yeah, you just got to keep it in Gorham's hands. He takes the long three, a mint, skies for the rebound. He's got the one-on-one -on -one matchup. This is the time to go up, but we'll you get a to great him. pass. I'm just telling you, man, he's in the right place at the <laughs> right time every time we see him play. We'll call it a great pass there. <laughs> This is the ball is back tapped right to the wide open shooter in the corner. Thanks. Travis Taylor's got four threes right now. I think he's got at least 16. He's, he might, he's got to. He would have almost 20 if they had called that goaltending. Oh, right. great grab. Oh, couldn't convert. That's the having Nate Amen oh. on the defensive end, right? You, you can't just yeah. go shoot a normal layup. Yeah. He is 6'10. Seven thirty remaining. McDonald bringing it up. Off the ball screen. Nice change oh, of pace in there. Big time block. There's Nate Ament. And they will. Oh, they'll say it was off. It was tipped by the Skills Factory. Chance Perkins going to step into one. Oh man. Leaves it short. Shivas Taylor, right place, right time. And there he loses the handle. It's going to go back to TSF. McDonald oh. off the back iron. Looked, Looked good. good coming off his hands. Yeah. Skip pass, touch pass, Taylor. Oh, wow. Leaves that one a little short. One. Keith. Oh. Zane. Travels. I'd like, to see, I'd like to see Keith get a little bit lower on his ball handling in the full court like that. He's kind of got, got his hand on the side of the ball a little bit. Nevertheless, though, an outstanding defender and slasher. Can't wait to see how much he grows over the season. And nice oh, little zipper wow. action. And there's the tip dunk from Josh Hamilton from the six. From the six. Just a waste man from the six, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Two impressive dunks for him. And, yeah, I think it's safe to say he's healthy at this point. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. And if the skills factory could hit the first end of their free throws, we actually might have a single-digit game. Nevertheless, the travel – of the day, I know they would not want anybody to make excuses for them. But after getting a chance to see them at the Juco Prep Showcase, I definitely think it was the travel. And here comes Jamal Smith. And it looks like they run the same action once again. Gorham. 
Hezzy with the left. And then a nice pull up <laughs> at the free throw line. His footwork has been immaculate. Ball screen. Oh, great jump stop and avoiding the charge. And it's the interesting, interesting thing about the skills factory is their small ball lineup may be their best offensive lineup. However, Big Uma Berry just does such an outstanding job of protecting the rim on the defensive side. And with 540 left to play, super soft Jamal Smith fouls out. And the free throw is good by McDoyle. And we haven't seen a whole lot of Casey Williams in the second half. And they throw the quick trap ball handler in the backcourt. Here's Gorham oh. again. Oh, my goodness. He is feeling it tonight. And the three ball off the mark. And Gorham. They got. Off the screen. They go under it and again. Then he check. Oh, Ooh. my goodness. He's got three in a row. Back to back threes after the mid range pull up. Jeremiah Gorham. Jeremiah Gorham is ridiculously underrated. We call him Scorum Gorham. Just, just so impressed with his overall feel for the game. When to score it, when to pass it. IQ on a thousand right now. And somebody should tell Coach Logan, no matter what, he needs to shoot the ball on this next play. <laughs> He's got eight, eight straight points. Rivera. And he looks at Gorham. Skip it. Oh, he wanted to step into oh. it. But gives it up and Shivas off the back iron. You know, look, look, he, and, look and Shiv now. he wanted Shiv to let that one go. Shivas is supposed to shot fake and throw it back to him <laughs> so that he can continue to heat check. Oh, oh, we got a baseline out of bounds here. But, I mean, Shivas has hit four threes himself today, so. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like pick your poison. If, if, if these guys shoot the ball the way that they have today all season, it's – Oh, and outstanding slip. Hamilton with his third dunk of the second Outstanding slip half. off the screen, the screener action. <laughs> we didn't do one. And now, oh, does he line it up? Off the mark. Here comes the skills factory. Looking to run with three and a half left to play. And Doyle on the pull up, no ah. good. Up ahead, Gorham with the layup. Silky smooth. Here come the skills factory. Long three off the mark. Oh, he's gonna. 
Oh, the hesitation. Here's Gorm over to Chance Perkins and another three. There's another guy who can shoot it on this Highland team. And that is about 15 threes on the afternoon. I mean. Which in high school. Yeah. Or in prep, I should say. But you're getting a sneak peek of the best prep league in the country, the EPL, brought to you by the CBG Live Network, the best prep league in the world. So if you've got it. <laughs> And just a refresher that because this prep basketball, 20-minute halves, still the seven foul, one and one, 10 foul, double bonus. Whereas in high school now, there is, since they're still playing court, since they play quarters in high school, there's the five foul, two shots automatically. Yep. Which I'm, I wonder, is it, is it the money from the TV timeouts? What is it that hasn't uh, made the boys go to college, the college boys go to quarters? When the women have already been in quarters for years now. I would say so. You get an extra. And they say it, they say it, they say it. Right. Oh. Yes, it, it is that you get it, or you get an extra commercial break. In college. More money. With the four TV timeouts. More money. Plus more. the, plus the uh, four full timeouts and two 30-second timeouts. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Makes perfect sense. Here comes the skills factory. Step back. And it is off the mark for a McDonald. Here is Rivera. And off the end of the bench for Highland. And everyone. And their bench goes crazy. And that will do it, folks. In their EPL debut, Highland School, 86-54 with the win over the Skills Factory. We got one more tonight between New Hope and... Sounds really weird. You guys, this, this is what you guys talk into the entire game. Yeah, sounds extremely weird. It, it does. <laughs> Darius got a picture already. Take, take, take like two back. All right, now you guys see the behind the scenes stuff that we do. Is we've got an interview here with head coach Logan Miller of Highland School, uh, getting the W in their first ever EPL game. Uh, Logan, you know everyone talked about the transition from you guys usually play high school basketball to now prep basketball. Uh, you, you didn't seem to have much, much uh, trouble with that. Just say a little bit, or talk a little bit about uh, any adjustments that you thought you would have to make yeah, or you I mean, didn't make. Yeah, uh, well, the EPL is is something we're really looking forward to, and we talk about toughness a lot. So you know, I felt like going into the EPL with six seniors, some of those guys being reclass seniors, 
uh, I felt like we were ready to take on the challenge. And um, I think we got off to a slow start as far as handling physicality. But throughout the course of the game, we definitely adjusted to, uh, to the officiating, to the physicality, you know, just to the style of the game. So, I mean, you talk about, you know, how your group of seniors, they've all played together for so long. I mean, just talk about the chemistry that they have. It's pretty evident, but what do you see every day yeah. that we don't? Yeah, I mean, we work a lot on just playing every day. Um, and we work, in, we work on and talk about being extremely connected uh, in everything we do. So, um, from off the court to on the court to just the, the communication to our warm-ups, uh, we preach uh, being connected and it's starting to translate for us on the court and it's starting to become very evident that these guys have been together for three years now. So, I mean, obviously you have one of the top players in the country in Nate Men, but, you know, he didn't have the best game of, of anybody on your team today. It was your other guys. So just talk a little bit about some of those other guys that you think are going to be able to get a little bump from playing in the EPL. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that because everybody refers to, to the team as, as Nate and the other guys, mm -hmm. right? It's nonstop social media. We're going into an event, it's Nate's face plastered everywhere. And rightfully so, he's earned it. But we have a really, really talented uh, group of guys. And they haven't exactly uh, found their stride just yet. They're, they're, they're uh, you know, they're uh, trending in the right direction, right? And, and those other guys are, are going to be the reason why we, we beat a lot of really good teams, right? Because it's never about one man. It's never about one kid. Right, our team is connected. We have a really good group. Uh, my staff is amazing. And it just, the, the connectedness is our superpower. And it's what we're going we're gonna to lean on all year. Awesome, man. I appreciate you taking your time. Go celebrate your first victory. And uh, we'll see you uh, later this week. Appreciate you. Yep.